Edwards with Exotic Automotive Magazine, and he's got a plethora of cars behind me, from a Lamborghini Huracan to a Ferrari. Now we've got a DeLorean done up like Back to the Future in uh, Part 2 and Part 3 with the Mr. Fusion. So Rob, let's get and talk about what it is you do here and your magazine and your cars. Well, uh, we're a new uh, car magazine. We're focused on uh, you know the, the high-end fashion aspect of uh, exotic cars and uh, you know modeling and we you know we have articles like every other magazine. One thing we try to do that other magazines don't do though is uh, all of our photos are basically frameable and the picture you know the print quality and the paper quality. We we make our magazines on photo paper, so it costs a little more to do it, but. Uh, Overall, you get a much, much better product. And, uh, so obviously that's something that a guy like me would want to frame up and put in his shop. Well, the idea was, yeah, so you, everybody remember the old snap-on calendars? Oh, yes. And everybody you know, had their pictures on the wall. And so, you know, it ain't just girls either. I mean, we guys and themes and it ain't just exotic cars either. We actually do you know, stuff like the time machine or trucks. It's just really well done cars and we emphasize uh, just great looking vehicles and content. And, Sounds like something I should aspire to get my cars in once I get some stuff, uh, once I get some more stuff handled and done. Right. It's so awesome. We, uh, you know, we do photo shoots. Uh, throughout the year and then uh, we put together a magazine. We have people write articles for us, you know, and uh, people contribute. It's kind of like a big family, really. We just have a lot of people helping out. Like the owner of this Ferrari, he's very, very good at writing. So he's here with us today, you know, showing the Ferrari off. Everybody that contributes to the magazine becomes a part of the magazine family. We don't, we try not to run it like a business, but we're, we tr everybody we bring into the magazine, we all become friends. And we hang out, we're associated with uh, Wisconsin Exotic Car Club. And so everybody from the car club brings their cars in, and we'll do pictures of them, and it all adds to the magazine. So that's where some of these pictures come from. Like uh, this Porsche, it's a uh, Metzger powered uh, turbo Porsche. And the club members, everybody gets a shot. Um, whoever wants to contribute to the magazine, if, you know, if the pictures are clear enough, we'll do it. How do you get, where, where do you have, like, if I was to go find your magazine and buy one, where do I get, how are you distributed at this point? Right now, we try to distribute, uh, we have our website. The easy way it is just uh, go to the Facebook page. It's, we, we like to do Facebook because uh, we can post every day and educate people about cars that have long lost and been forgotten. Most of the posts are exotics, uh, prototypes, uh, rare cars that have never, you know, most people don't see because they show up at a car show in Switzerland and disappear into history. We spark the interest and that's that's the whole idea is to get people interested. You know, everybody thinks, you know, exotic cars are unattainable and, you know, too hard to buy and, or expensive to maintain and, I mean, you can buy a used uh, uh, 348 TS like this right now for you know, a decent one for right around 50000 uh, That's a lot of money, but yet it's a Ferrari. We drove here in a 2013 Ford Expedition and that thing brand new was $57,000. Exactly. So, so, you know, not for nothing, I get it. If you can afford a Ford Expedition or payments, there's no reason why you couldn't buy a $50,000 Ferrari and in the end you have a Ferrari that which, only appreciates and the excursion will go down in price. Oh, absolutely. Anybody that's watched my channel any length of time knows that one thing I push is to drive something different. Anybody can buy you know, your Toyota Corollas, and I guess they're okay, but for me, it's like you've got to yeah. drive something different and something that you see. Like, I drive a beat-up 64 Chevy Impala, and I drive that regularly, okay? Yeah. But everybody in town knows who owns that car. They see that car. They recognize that car. That's the whole custom car life that I talk about. Now, obviously, a Ferrari is a step above what I would want to buy as of now for my personal, well, financial situation as I'm trying to build the channel and build my shop. 
that's why I'm looking into DeLorean so that I could buy, repair, fix up, and do, then drive around something that's legitimately a lot different. That's the point that I tried. I'm glad that somebody else also understands it. So it sounds like FSC, Fast Check Speed and Custom, and Exotic Automotive Magazine have a lot in common. Right. We're just at a little different spectrum of of the financial side of certain cars. However, if you could get in this Ferrari behind me for 50K, that's not unobtainable for the average guy with a job. No, I would say, or you could buy yourself, let's say, like I have my personal fun car is a, I have a 2006 Porsche Boxster convertible. You know, that's just, right, that's hardly that's a slouch. You're gonna be seen, seen you're, you're gonna be nice seen driving out on the road. You can pick them up for 20 grand. Right, and exactly, so. Really he, low mile, clean, nice, pretty car. Yeah, exactly. So, let's go ahead and check out what else, what he has here. Like I said, one thing he has, he's got the Time Machine DeLorean, he's got the Ferrari, and the Lamborghini Huracan. So let's go ahead and check that out. I'm here with Nick. He owns the Lamborghini Huracan right here behind him. So we'll go ahead and let Nick explain all about his Lamborghini Huracan. All right, all right so what do we have here? We have a 2016 Lamborghini Huracan. And it has uh, been customized. Uh, it has a uh, wide body, prior design wide body. Um, it has a uh, matte, gray matte color with a uh, clear bra. The whole car is clear bra. Um, we have different wheels, uh, customized wheels, lots of spoilers that we added on. The full customization of it um, is completely redesigned. Uh, we dropped, uh, it has Lobitech spring systems and suspension, so we dropped it uh, as much as we can to the ground. Um, it has right now we boosted it up to uh, 680 horsepower. How did you do that with what? Just, just, a, just a tune or? Just, just a tune. So it's still naturally aspirated? It's still naturally aspirated as, as it is right now, which is a V10, 5.2 liters. Um, normally themselves come at uh, a 600, the LP. 610, which is about 610 horsepower. Meaning LP610-4, meaning this is a all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive. 610 horsepower. Correct. That's how she came from Lamborghini. Correct. Yes. You That's added a tune to it to get more power. Yes. Um, she's got an exhaust system on it. Um, a two-piece exhaust, um, which add on more horsepower too. Um, changes completely dynamically the, the way they sound. They sound awesome now. So I have a completely carbon fiber hood, completely redesigned, uh, the standard normal one the way they look. Now the car sits static like this. It's not bagged. It's lowered, and that's it is, that's it is where static. it sits. It is. They do come. They do have a uh, left system. So you could raise up the front a little bit to about 2.5 inches, but that's about it. Otherwise, as it sits, that's how you ride. You just gotta be real careful when you're driving down the road. Absolutely. That's a little, you gotta be a little more cautious. Anything on the interior or you wanna show off? Or? Um, not much done on the interior. It's, uh, So we have a digital dashboard. Um, you can make, uh, you can adjust it to display whatever things you like. Um, navigation system or just strictly, it just does dashboard. You could customize it to show whatever, whatever you want it to show. Um, we have a lot of key buttons here that control uh, your lift system, your windows. Um, Anti-towing, um, obviously you have your start up, start stop button and it kind of has this kind of be Now if you could explain the different driving modes that are selected on the bottom of that steering wheel here. So the strata mode is pretty much is if you drive your car on a daily basis, it's designed to keep your exhaust a little bit at lower levels and it's not as aggressive. So when you start up, um, you also use the same system when you drive in the winter conditions. Strata, so your throttle is not too aggressive. Obviously sport, you put it into sport then everything 
your exhaust open up and they become a little more louder uh, the car drops a little more lower and your uh, acceleration is more aggressive so now to, as soon as you pinch it a little bit it just it goes and then you have the Corsa mode and Corsa mode is pretty much you use it when you race you, when you need to be on a track so it's a little more aggressive yeah. than aggressive that's correct you need to be on a race or you're racing somebody you go into Corsa mode and pretty much all everything goes off and it this gives it the raw power all of it that it has awesome so that's the Corsa mode you do you track this car at all or you just drive it around to show it off a little I, bit I drive it around um, I haven't tracked the, this one not particularly this one okay I have other ones that I've tracked them this one I have not for some reason I was thinking this was your only one so you have other Lamborghinis other than we this have one other cars other exotics Audi R8 Audi R7 I've been in exotic cars for a long time oh wow nice I'm waiting for the call. <laughs> Nick, it was great to meet you. Thank, Thank you for you. showing me your Lamborghini Huracan. That is awesome. I have Dave right here with me. He owns the 1992 Ferrari 348 right here behind us. Thanks for joining Steve and I today at the car show. It's been a really fun show to attend. There's lots of great people here. Behind me is a 1992 Ferrari 348 TS. About 200 were imported into the United States during its five-year run. What makes the 348 very special is it was the first year when they had a longitudinal engine with a dry sub motor in it, and it tracks because of analog, there's no computer control on it, so it tracks like a go-kart. The back end will come out, you can use the accelerator to get the car to go where you want to point it. I received the gift, uh, the car, from a gift from my father, Frank. When I was a young man, I was driving him crazy always about owning a Ferrari one day. And as Dad got older in life and realized that his time might be shorter, he asked me one time when we were out to dinner what I might do with his inheritance. And I told him I wasn't ready to talk about his demise and moved him on. About halfway through dinner, he brought it up again. And I said, Dad, I'm really uncomfortable talking about this. I tell you what, we'll pay bills with the inheritance. How about our baseball team, Dad? So we got to the end of the meal and Dad raised his glass for a toast and he said, David, I think you should use your inheritance to help buy the Ferrari you've always dreamed of. And so we did. And if you look at the license plate, you'll see it's Dad's gift. That is special right there. Wow. So Steve, if you come over to the engine bay and look in here, some things that make it different. The cars that preceded this were a 308 and a 328. And in those models, the engine was called Traverse, so it was sideways within the engine bay. This is a longitudinal engine design now, just like a Formula One car. And it's a dry sump motor, which means there's no oil pan under the car. If you look to the right, you'll see there's a sump or a reservoir here for the oil. By not having an oil pan under the car, it lowered the engine six inches closer to the ground. So the center of gravity on this car is about four inches off the ground. The car also has a monocoque platform like a Formula One car. Interior is all leather. And it's a little bit stark by today's designs. You don't have a lot of computerization in the car, and that's what I love about it. Manual transmission with a clutch, no computer controls on the drivetrain, so when you're driving the car, you are driving the car. The car's not driving you. How many miles are on it? Do you it's, drive it a lot? Yeah, well, I have 44,000 miles on it. And I take it to shows and different car events. I'm a I was a director in the Ferrari Club of America. I'm also the chairperson for the Milwaukee Concord Elegance Show and Glow Paddock, a show in downtown Milwaukee on August 4th. We'll have 400 cars on the show field for the paddock and approximately another 120 cars in the Concord Elegance. And for those of you that follow cars on TV, Dennis Gage from My Classic Car will be making an appearance with his crew and they'll be filming a segment over the two day run. So if you have a chance to come down on August 4th to Milwaukee's Veterans Park, that would be great. I also track the car at Road America in Mid-Ohio, so we take it out and we run it at full speed. Oh, I've wow. had it up to about 135 miles an hour, and uh, it handles unbelievable. It handles just like a Formula One car, and it's been a real joy to, to share with people. And I think I get my biggest kick when some young boy comes up and wants to have a picture behind the steering wheel of the car. We, are, we are always accommodate them for it. 
You know what, we talk, I follow a channel called Daily Driven Exotics, okay, Damon Fryer who runs that channel. He's got, you know, he's got, he had a Ferrari Scuderia, I think it was a 430 Scuderia. He has a Lamborghini Huracan, he just got a Murcielago. Either way, one thing that he does that I always kind of change the thing, and you just mentioned the exact same thing. When I was a kid growing up in New Jersey, anybody with like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or something anywhere near that, they would be like all like, they wanted, like, they would scoff at you for just looking at it. Hey, get away from my car, that kind of thing. <laughs> and you're always telling me like, look, kids sit in it and all, like you, you're very open and inviting where it's like, wow, it's like, it totally blows away that stereotype that I always had about people who own exotic cars. Yeah, and you know, I've never really considered myself an owner of the car. To me, I'm a custodian. I need to maintain this car and pass it on to the next generation. So having an opportunity to put a young boy behind the wheel or a young girl uh, I, is just wonderful. That's where I get most of my joy of, of ownership or custodianship. That is, that is awesome. That is a truly great story, especially that with your father, Dave. Thank you, Steve. I actually appreciate that. It's been a that. pleasure. Awesome. Nick has been so gracious, he's going to allow Matthew, my son here, to sit in his beautiful Lamborghini Huracan. Now, Matt, this is by far the most expensive car you will have ever have sat in. Until I own a Murcielago. Until you own a Murcielago. Goals, exactly. Set goals, grind hard, and work at it. Nick, I definitely appreciate it because you're helping my, you know, if anything, like Dave was saying earlier with the Ferrari, let kids sit in the car. It helps them, it helps them to see the cars, it helps them experience the cars, and hopefully one day I do that as a, as a motivation because for me, setting into a, a exotic car was a motivation for me to have one, to work hard and be able to afford one one day. And, you know, if I could do the same thing for kids, you know, serve as a motivation point for them so they could do better in life and eventually have an exotic or something they could enjoy themselves too one day. So for me it was a motivational piece and I hope it is for other kids too. So that's why we do that all the time and I treat it like nothing different than a piece of metal because that's pretty much what it is. But if it can make somebody's life a little more happier and enjoyable, well, we're all for it. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead and see a trick to getting in it or is he just gonna figure it out himself? Oh, he's gonna figure it out. It's very cozy. It's nice. Very cozy, huh? Yeah. You look stretched out and comfortable in there. It's a lot different than that square body Chevy you guys been working down at Freedom. Yeah, it's way different. Hey, set goals. That's a goal. Work set at it, grind out. And then live the life you want to live. That's it, grind it out and work hard. That's how you get there. Here we are with Dave again, and Dave is gracious, just like he said earlier, he's going to let my son sit in the Ferrari. <laughs> Hop in, buddy. This would have to be the second most expensive car this kid has ever sat in. Just me getting in with the warning. Gotcha, I thought you were short. I see it's a manual. Yeah, oh yeah, you gotta have a manual transmission. That gated shifter is the most important part. You fit in there pretty good. You look good in there. I think you should, I think you should, yeah, convince your dad to buy that for you. If only. <laughs> tell him grind it out and go get three of them himself. Yeah, that's right. Work hard, do well, get a great education, and you'll be fine. No, no, I bad time. Can I get some assistance? Oh, wait, you're filming. Mike over at DeLorean taught me to swing your legs out and then hop out. Um, well, for me to get in, you sit down and then swing your legs in. That's what Mike at DeLorean told me how to get out of the DeLorean. I really like the opening mechanism of this. 
there's a little lip underneath in here. And you push this in, it opens. Awesome. I chose this condo because it's a lot easier to form or bend parallel. There we go. Oh, it even beeps too. Yeah, it beeps, and then it also says last time to party it also. So, yeah, not that time, that visual display there.